So thank you so much for the generous introduction, Ali, and thank you all for coming out. Um, so, and, and this is really a work in progress, so please bear with me for, for the inconsistencies and the incompleted parts in the whole. Uh, I want to start with the title with the German, let's start my timer, um, 18th century poet uh, Gotthold Ephraim Lessing, who wrote the famous drama Nathan der Weise. And it contains a famous passage about a parable of the three rings. A father was supposed to give his famous ring to the best son, but he had three sons. So he made replicas and gave each, and uh, rings that could not be differentiated. And of course, the sons argued among each other who had the real one, uh, but in the end, they couldn't decide. So they decided upon, let's just try to live up to the promise of the ring. And it's a parable for religious tolerance, but it also shows that the great monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, are closely linked to each other and have often argued with each other, right? And their, their linking shows, for example, in the, in the occurrence of common figures. So in the Quran, we find the Annunciation to Mary that she is pregnant, um, as shown in this uh, 13th century Islamic manuscript. And of course, when they argue with each other, they quote their holy scriptures. Another feature that occurs in this discourse is that sometimes, because knowledge can be scarce, the, um, there are long lines of text reused. For example, there's this book of clarity with regard to the truth, which was authored in the 13th, uh, 11th century in Egypt, gets translated to Latin, gets used again by the Latin author, and then has a wide European reception also into Orthodox Russian uh, church si circles and Greek Orthodox. So we have these strong interconnections within this discourse. And the premise of my project is, why not represent this as linked and hopefully open data that can be updated, that can be uh, shared with each other and so on and so forth. That's the basic premise. And to do this, um, I looked at possibility, okay, so this is the agenda. First, how to describe it, how to use knowledge that already exists, um, how to allow the community, I mean, this is the topic of the conference, right? Collaboration is an opportunity. Uh, and how to, how to draw conclusions from this. And to describe it, uh, first, what do we want to describe? This is a text edition, and it has this note, CF Quran 335, right? Look at this other passage and you will be rewarded, is essentially the promise of this. And how do we model this? And so I looked at, at uh, ontological solutions to model this kind of knowledge. And the closest that I found are the below mentioned Hypermedia Dante Network, which makes references and commentaries to the Divine Comedy explicit. And an older project, Sharing Ancient Wisdoms, um, is about ancient collections of life advice. And both are thankfully based on the same top level ontology, on um, the uh, library reference model, which is harmonized with CDOC CRM. So I took this and tried to build something to model that what we find in these footnotes. But there's a main difference between these which needed to be harmonized because the Hypermedia Dante network essentially says we report that somebody is drawing a connection. So we have an item, the connection itself, and sharing ancient wisdoms is more direct. It says there is a connection, so between two text bits. And I believe to model scholarly discourse, we need to pick the first option, despite it being more complex, so there can be disagreement. So this is essentially what I came up with. You don't need to take it in all at once. I will go through it. Um, so the initial part is basically what the Hyper... Oh, sorry, I need, need to insert. I, I am very grateful to both people from the Hypermedia Dental Network and from Sharing Ancient Wisdom for discussing this with me and the Hypermedia Dental Network for sharing their early version of ontology with me. So basically the first thing is we have a claim that two text fragments are related to each other. And this, I, I would argue, is the essential form in which such knowledge occurs. Then we need to assign the responsibility for that claim to somebody. And then we have to have some kind of typology what the connection is. And here we can be even more detailed than the texts we already have. And here I'm basically taking what we have as predicates in uh, the sharing ancient wisdoms and inserting them as types of parallels. Finally, something that I also want to introduce, the text can itself signal that it's drawing a parallel. So 
what kind of signaling is there? Are they saying it's, it's a person who says this? Are they pointing to a specific word and so on and so forth? So this is my, my idea of how to model this discourse. So how can we, how can we use existing knowledge? First, what knowledge exists? Well, we have additions, right? And we have additions with the source operators that we can use. So why not um, extract information from this source operators? And this is what um, I tried so far. And my central figure is Ricardo da Monte di Croce, who wrote around 1300, because he's really connected. So he used the Quran in Arabic. He went to Baghdad, he learned Arabic. Um, but he was also used in many instances, among others, by Petrus de Penis in his Tractatus Contra al Coranum, which is around 1400, that we don't really know, right? So in order to do this, for, um, we processed, and I'm very thankful for, to my significant other, Katharina, for helping me with this. Uh, first, there's a, a PDF, which has to be processed ocr We used Microsoft Azure in the end, because for, for cleanly scanned text, it proved all almost 100% correct and was the best. And then we extract the data. And I, I found this figure amazing that in 80 published pages of an edition, there's 1,348 connective claims to other words, uh, works. And then there's the derivatory work by Petrus de Penis, the Tractatus Contra al Corano. There's a lot of manual correction going on, of course, because editors are inconsistent despite trying their best. And then I'm transforming them with open refine RDF transform, and then of course comes the further refinement by hand. And the next steps of course would be to, to use things that are even easier to convert like XML types, like uh, exported from the classical text editor or from CI XML. Um, a vital part of my project is also talking to other people in order to, to get their knowledge into this about connections. And I'm quite lucky that right now there's quite a few projects, especially in the Christian Muslim religious encounters, for example, the ESC Synergy, the European Quran, and so on and so forth. So there's many people who are making these dif discoveries at this time. So we don't have to take everything afterwards and insert this, but we can talk to them. And this is also part of what I'm trying to do at the moment. First, sensitize people to the potentials of recording their findings as structured data, discuss if the representation is correct, and in the end, hopefully, to integrate knowledge that is generated right now. And these are some, some hopes that I have uh, of, of uh, data sets that people are working on right now. For example, there's like a, a famous letter, uh, a fictitious letter between a um, Muslim and a Christian called the, the Risalat al-Kindi, which then makes its way into the French vernacular. There's somebody who's working on uh, early modern French encyclopedias and what they have in the article on Islam or the Quran. There's the reception of Ricardo in the Greek Orthodox tradition and so on, so on and so forth. So I hope to be able to integrate this. So in the end, um, what, what kind of conclusion can we draw from this? And I mean, right now, there, there's not much yet. So first, what works if we have it as proper RDF? We can find indirect citations or indirect sources, of course, which, which if you do it, usually you have to chase down these references down the line. And in this case, you know, on the left, you have the Tractatus Contra al Corano, and the editor has just given the source Contra Legem Saracinorum, which is like the right column. But now if we have it as linked data, we can find out which Quranic verses these things are indirectly based on. And of course, this is something that hopefully gets gets enlarged but that already that i think should be really helpful and now that that we have it as um that we can of course play around with with some basic statistical analysis and this is nothing special but we can see how much of his pretext does petrus dependent retain and does he insert it more block like which like a median length of 16 suggests or does he take smaller bits uh, of of text at one time right so these are the things that, that we can find out. To summarize, the dreams and visions of this project would be to really achieve a shared conceptualization, how connections in interreligious encounters um, work and how to record them, to gather and refine old and new data with, with the community and find a uh, sort of a currency to, to share knowledge in the end with the ultimate goal, of course, uh, to 
answer old questions quicker and to be able to ask new ones. So thank you so much.